Thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. I genuinely didn't even think I would actually hit that number. When I was around seven to 8,000 on Discord, I made my name next video at 10K because I thought oh, I'm never gonna hit that. So I'm just gonna like quit YouTube and that's it. Here we are, you guys actually kept subscribing. Even though I haven't uploaded a proper video for like almost a year, we still hit 10,000 subscribers and thank you so much. Um, it really means a lot. It shows me that you guys actually enjoy my videos. If you have any video ideas, leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. I'm really grateful for it. It means a lot. Enjoy this video. What's going on guys? This is going to be the last episode of the kernel series. We're basically just going to draw ESP from our kernel driver. We're just going to implement uh, the WinGDI functions in our driver. So basically a quick rundown on WinGDI. It stands for Windows Graphics Driver Interface. So it's just a programming interface, core operating system component, and it lets you just output shit to your screen. So what can we use it for? We can draw lines, curves, boxes, and text. In this video, we're focusing on the boxes, but you can follow the same steps in this video to implement draw text or lines or whatever you want drawing a box so in user mode you can just use the function frame rec and that's going to basically just draw a box on your screen now we can't exactly call this function from our kernel driver so how are we going to do it well we're going to look at what this function actually does and this is from react os and as you can see all this function does is it selects the brush that you want to use to draw and then it calls this function pad blt to draw the rectangle the first thing it does is it saves the current brush before drawing and then once it's done drawing with the brush you want it sets it back to the old brush so next thing we need to do is just look at these functions here select object and pad blt and see if we can call them from the kernel a way we can do this is shout out to this guy no idea how to say his name but i'm just going to say juru we're going to look at the windows sys calls now i usually use his website but it's down at the moment so i'm going to use his github now this might look a little familiar we did use this in part one when we were looking for a function to hook but now we're just looking at functions to export and call so what this is is it's just a bunch of syscalls from the win32k driver and the reason we're interested in this one is because it stores a bunch of the graphics syscalls for the gdi so what we can do is we can just control f and look for the functions that we're interested in i was looking at get dc before don't worry about that before we get into this i just want to say head over to my patreon uh, it'll be linked below patreon.com slash null terminator five dollars a month you get access to the source code from this video and all the other videos on my channel and recently i've been uploading the compiled files as well so for the kernel cheat tutorial for part one and two you can just have access to the files straight away you can check out the code as well you'll have all the source code so this is all you got to do just search the um function you want to look at and then just react os and it'll pop up here so here's the code for frame rec. the first function i want to look at is select object now i don't really care about this line because i'm just going to delete this line but uh, we do need this one because we need to set it to the brush that we want so it takes in the hdc which is a handle to the device context and it takes in the object that you want to select okay now what this function does is it just has a switch case and it just looks for which type of object you're trying to select um, but in this case since we're just uh, implementing frame rects we're trying to select a brush so let's see what would happen so it does checks what handle type it is it's not a region type not a bitmap it's a brush type and it calls this function select brush so let's just do this function so this one is a bit more specific nice takes in hdc and a brush which is exactly what we want so we'd probably just want to call this function anyway but let's look at the sys calls and check if select object is in there and uh it's not in here so let's look at select brush okay so select brush is in here so that means we can export it and call it from our kernel driver next function we're going to need is this thing pat blt so same as select objects we're just going to check if it's in here and if it is then we can just call it directly otherwise oh it is in here so we can export um select not select object we can export select brush and replace select object with select brush because it's doing the same thing and then we can just uh, export pat blt as well to do this part so let's um implement this in the code i'm using the same project from part one and two i just downloaded this from my patreon because i'm pretty sure i've lost the original project but anyway i'm just having a quick look through here and there's a couple things i want to change <laughs> um i don't know why i did this not equal to fold it should be something like this I'm not even doing else ifs, I'm just doing if statements. It could do three operations in one call, which is not how it's designed. It's meant to be one operation per call. So I'm just gonna add the else ifs here to make it safer. Cause you don't really want to just request the base, but then it ends up writing some random bit of memory or whatnot. Anyway, all right, great. So how do we actually 
implement this into our code and export these functions. So all you want to do is let's start with select brush. So you just copy this part here, paste it into the code and you want to add, add a bit. So you want to say type def, I don't think that matters. Do this, this, and then you want to add a semicolon right there, man. And that's it. So now we have a type def for the function. We had another function, pad blt. So copy this. Um, I'm pretty sure this is x, y, width, Right. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's right. And then the last one, D word, cool, no one cares. So we're just gonna do the same thing. Type def and get rid of this. Okay, great. So we need to export another function to actually get the device context. And the way you do it in user mode is with get DC. So first thing we wanna check is if there's just a kernel function we can export that does it for us. But if there isn't, then that's when you want to go in React OS, look at the user mode function and see what kernel functions it calls. And you're going to have to basically just replicate the user mode function in kernel, right? And call the functions it's calling um, by exporting those specific functions. Luckily, there's a syscall that we can just uh, export and call. So it's going to be end user get DC. So this is it in React OS. I clicked on it just to get this part here that we can just copy and paste. And we're just going to have to do this type def thing again. Just like that. So we have select brush, uh, pad blt, and get dc. Let's see if we need any more. Okay, yeah. So we're going to need to create the brush as well, which doesn't show up here, but it requires a brush as a parameter. So the way you do it in WinGDI is you just create brush. So I'm just going to search create. Oh, first I'm going to search brush. So I don't know what it's called exactly. So I'm just going to go through all of these. And there we go. So we see create solid brush, which is just the kernel uh, syscall that we can export. So since we can export it, I'm going to search it in React OS, um, this one. And then we just copy this. I'm sorry if this is a little all over the place. I usually have like a second monitor to keep me on track with like nodes and stuff. I don't have that anymore and I'm kind of just doing this on the fly. So we got select brush, pad blt, get dc, create brush. Let's just triple check, make sure we're not missing any other function. So we can get the dc. The rectangle is just, uh, we create our own rectangle. We can create the brush, we can select the brush and we can draw the actual rectangle. Okay, I think that's it. So it returns an int and it takes this so i'm just honestly just gonna, oh my god now i'm just gonna add the function in this uh namespace here so i'm gonna copy that uh do this um get rid of this there you go dude copy that again go down here paste it add uh, this all right cool now we can just paste this code into here we're gonna add our own parameter here for the thickness delete this line replace select object with select brush replace pad blt with nt pad blt and lastly replace the one with the thickness parameter and there we go, our own frame rect function. So the video you've just been watching was recorded a week ago. After that point, I kind of ran into some problems when I was trying to get this to work. So I've solved those issues. It's a week later and I'm going to finish off the video. The function we were hooking, for some reason, when you hook that function and then you open like Google Chrome, it blue screens your computer. So the way I fix it is just by hooking a different function. Everything else is the same. You just change the function name here. You can copy the one I'm using here. It'll work perfectly fine. It also comes up in the syscall table that we've been using here. I'm pretty sure these other functions around it will work as well. They're very similar. So that fixes the blue screen. Next problem, for some reason, Win32K doesn't come up in this uh, module list. So we're going to have to make another module export function that can actually find the base address of the Win32K modules. So we need to make a function that's going to get a routine address and it takes in the routine name. So it's going to be a really short function. We need a Unicode string and we're basically just going to convert the parameter into a Unicode string and we're converting it to a Unicode so that we can pass that into this function here and that'll work. So that's the function there. Next, we're going to pretty much make a new version of this function here. So I'm going to copy this, paste it, and this needs to be a WSDR again. Well, we can delete all this. If you want more information on what I'm about to do here, you can check out this great write-up here. There's two different write-ups. This first one has a bunch of information on a lot of Windows internals and other things like that. I'll link it in the description. We're looking at how to get kernel module addresses. So the method we've been using is similar to this method that he puts here, the query system information method. But this wasn't working for me because Win32K wasn't coming up for me. It says I, it works for him, but it wasn't working for me. So I just switched over to another method down here. 
which is the PS loaded module list method. Uh, we're going to be doing it a similar way to this, but I just wanted to give credit to this guy because this is where I learned about this. This second write up here goes into a lot more detail if you really want to understand what's happening. So this gives a nice visualization of the module list and it also goes into depth with the kernel debugging. Okay, great. So let's start putting it into code. First thing we're going to need is module list and we're going to get it using a little function that we coded uh, up here. And we want to say PS loaded module list. Awesome. So that's how you get the module list. I'm going to quickly check if that pointer is valid. Now that we have the list, how do we actually traverse it? So basically the way we're going to loop this is going to look a little different if you haven't uh, worked with doubly linked lists before. We're basically just going to say, while we're not at the end of the list, just go to the next link in the list. So we're going to create a new variable here. It's going to be a plist entry and that's going to be the link. And we're going to start at the top of the list. And we want to say, while it's not the bottom of the list, it's going to be blink equal the next element in the list, right? So while we're not at the bottom, keep going through the list. So now that we're in the list, okay, that's going to be the entry. And we want to use containing record at link. It's going to be a data table entry. And we want to do the first field. So uh, this one right here. Just like that. Now that we have the entry, we can check if it's the right module. We're going to need another Unicode string here, and it's going to be for the module name. And we're going to be comparing the entry base DLL name. So that's going to be the module name, right, with the one we're looking for. And we want it to be case sensitive. So if they match, we're returning the base address. Cool. So if the base is valid, we're going to export the routine, pass the base, and then the routine name we're looking for. Otherwise, if the DLL base is null, now that we have these export functions that we can use, head over to our hook.cpt. Uh, I've already got the, <laughs> just recorded this by the way, my computer crashed and I lost the recording, so I'm doing it again. So some of the code is still here, but we're gonna have to create the function variables, right? Using the type defs that we created earlier. And you just wanna set it to null initially here. I guess just pause the video and copy this out. <laughs> but what we're gonna do is we're going to actually use the export functions in our call kernel function here. So this is where we set the hook. And because this only runs once, we're gonna put this code in here as well because we only want it to run once. So we can set our function addresses. Now the way we're gonna do this is by setting the function address. We wanna type cast the return of our function that we just created. So it gets this module export and you wanna make sure you're passing a WSTR so it uses the right function. Because if you don't use this L here, it's going to go to the other version here. So you see we have two versions with the same name. So make sure that's a WSTR. Or select brush, it's in Win32K full. If you wanna know which module it's in, you can just use WinDBG. You can load Win32K full and Win32K base, and then search for whatever function you're looking for. So if you're looking for select brush, you just search select brush in WinDBG, and it'll tell you which module it's in. It'll be something like this, exclamation mark, and then like select brush, or whatever the function name is. That's gonna be the module that it's in. And then we wanna put the routine name, which is gonna be like this with NT at the start, I think. So now we need to do this exact same thing with all the other functions. So I'm just gonna edit that for you. So this is create solid brush, pat BLT, get DC release DC and delete object app. So I just realized I, I've added these two functions here um, when I was fixing the code. So I think you guys wouldn't, won't have these type defs here. So I'll show you guys the type defs. You can go on React OS, search these functions here if you want to get the function definitions like that, or just pause the video and copy these two type defs here. These are the type defs for the two functions. So we're going to need these two functions um, to release the HDC, our device context handle. And this is going to be to delete the handle to the brush that we create. Now we can use them in our hook. So we just scroll down here and we're going to add another if statement. And we're going to say, if we want to draw a box, we're going to use these functions here. So we're going to need a new Boolean and some ints in our struct here. So you want to add a Boolean draw box and you want to add RGB, XY, width, height, and thickness as int. And we're going to need these to draw the actual box. The first thing we're going to have to do is get the HDC using our exported function. And we pass null in there so that we get the device context for the whole screen, the entire monitor, so we can draw anywhere we want. I'm going to quickly check if this handle is valid. And if it's not, then unsuccessful. Next, we need uh, the brush. We're going to use create solid brush. You want to pass RGB, which is a macro. This is defined in wingdi.h, so make sure you include that. It's got RGB, and it's from zero to 255, okay? So we want to pass our instructions for R, G, and B, and then you want to pass null. Once again, I'm going to check if the brush is a valid handle, just like that. Now we can actually draw the rectangle. 
oh well we actually need to create the rectangle first and that's going to be the x y the x plus the width and then it's the y plus the height now we can call frame rect plus hdc plus the rectangle the brush and the thickness so now we've drawn the rectangle we just need to release the hdc and the brush and we do this using the new exports that we've added and you want to pass brush for the delete object app and that's it so that should be it for the driver now we want to head over to the user mode program and we need to create a function to draw the box so it's going to be the same as these other functions that we have here it's going to be called draw box and it's going to take uh quite a few parameters it's going to take the x y width height thickness r b and b we don't need these two don't need these two either also i forgot to mention um since we changed the struct we need to copy it and paste it into the user mode one you want to make sure that the struct is the exact same in the user mode program and the driver you also want to make sure in the user mode uh, program that you change the function name as well otherwise it's not going to work you want to make sure this function name matches the one in the driver and up here okay great so the struct matches the function matches now we need to change these other function calls here anytime you add a new boolean you need to make sure that you're setting that boolean to false in all the other function calls so we've created the draw box boolean and you want to make sure you're setting it to false so i'm going to copy this and you want to paste it in all of the functions so i've already done it because like i said before i just recorded this but the mp4 got corrupted so i have to record it again but you just want to make sure you're pasting it in all the other functions and of course in the draw box function you want to set it to true and set all, all the other ones to false. We'll have to set some more instructions here. So we have the X, Y, width, height, etc. The X, Y, width, height, R, B, B. So we're setting the X, Y, I forgot the thickness. Good thing I'm double checking here. And you wanna make sure you do the thickness. Now down in main, I'm just doing a while loop and I'm calling draw box 50, 50, size of 50, 50, thickness of two, and it's red. So I'm going to build this and let's hope it works. Now to map the driver, I'm using KD Mapper. Google KD Mapper, it's the first link. Credits to the crews for maintaining this and updating it, adding a bunch of features. Apparently this works on from 1607 to Windows 11. So there shouldn't be any problems. You guys should be able to run this. Download the code and compile it and copy the exe over to the directory. Okay, great. So I'm going to map the driver just by dragging and dropping it onto KD Mapper. So we've mapped the driver. Now I'm going to run the user mode um, exe and hopefully it'll draw a box in the top left corner. And there we go. You can see it's drawing a box. It's on top of everything. It'll be on top of games as well. So I know this is probably a little underwhelming, <laughs> just drawing a box in the corner of my screen. Like I said earlier, this isn't just boxes. You can follow the same steps in this video by going to React OS and looking up function definition and the code for the functions and implementing them in your driver. And specifically, you can do this with draw tech and you can also do it with a function called fill rec to draw filled rectangles for like health bars and stuff. Anyways, here's a clip of my Tarkov cheat that uses this exact same drawing method. Um, in that one, I have implemented draw text and fill rec. Hopefully you guys can do that yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers leave a like subscribe okay great goodbye